Hello viewers, today we are working once again on this BMW E91. In the previous video I showed you how I'm changing the valve stem seals, which are changed right now. This is all of them, plus some hydraulic lifters which are bad. But in this video I'm going to show you quickly how to time up properly this engine, uh, which is with not so good reputation in the BMW community, but does matter. All right now I have installed the both camshafts, the exhaust and the intake. I have just finger tied the bolt on the vanus gear and yeah, I, have, I have attached this bolt also. Right now the tensioner is removed. Here is the tensioner. Actually this, this car came with a replace timing chains. I haven't replaced it. It's not, it's not uh, my doing. So this is a brand new chain with guides and everything else. Everything was replaced before the owner bring the car to me to replace the valve stem seals and actually when I rechecked the timing uh, the intake camshaft was slightly retarded with roughly 10 or 15 degrees probably 10 degrees because I believe on this engine more than 12 degrees is going to trigger the check engine light and uh, the check engine light was not turned on it was turned on but for misfires as usual on these engines it was not triggering codes for camshaft or synchronized between the crankshaft and the camshaft so let me show you what we're going to use this is the timing tool actually this is all the timing tool this is for the valve tronic and stuff but we are not going to use this today we are just going to time up the engine so this is for holding the reluctor wheels this is for replacing the, the tensioner the chain tensioner and this is the bot walking plates for the camshafts from behind uh, yeah this is for the crankshaft walking actually the kit came with two crankshaft walking pins but uh, most of the time this is not going to work out you're going to need something like this and as we can see it's already a little bit modified uh, because it doesn't want to go in all the way so this is the tool which we're going to use it's really stiff installation of this tool and without this handle it's going to be almost impossible to install it i'm going to show you how i do it and where to walk it and little by little you're going to see how it's done it's not so hard uh, so let's start with walking the crankshafts and after that we're going to continue with walking the camshafts so hopefully it's not going to be confusing but right now piston number one is not on top dead center because once again I, as i told you i have replaced the valve seals and i have rotated the engine so to i have the piston number two and three on top dead center and right now on number one is not there so i'm going to need to rotate the engine once again so to be able to bring the piston on top dead center on cylinder number one for this I'm going to need to install this because I'm going to need to rotate the engine and right now we don't have the tensioner installed as you can see it's right here so I'm going to install this so to be able to rotate the engine I don't want the chain to be swacked that's why I'm going to use this I'm going to install it in place and then I'm going to rotate the engine uh, right now as I told you these bolts are not tightened up this means when I rotate the engine the gears are going to rotate but the camshafts are going to stay in place pretty much right now the camshafts are almost timed i'm going to install a tool after that but as we can see this is the intake camshaft and this part from behind is showing that it's pretty much in place uh, actually on the exhaust side we are a little bit off the camshaft is a little bit rotated I hope you guys see it, but it's kind of hard to, to show you. So it's a little bit tilted to the exhaust side. So I'm going to need to straighten it up. The exhaust camshaft has a place for a wrench back uh, here. As we can see, let me zoom in. As we can see, we have a place for a wrench here. So I can rotate the exhaust camshaft and by that I can put it in place so I'm going to yeah I'm going to put the box for the camshafts to I want them to be walked after that I'm going to install this and we're going to rotate the engine so for the intake camshaft we're going to need to use this bracket and on the exhaust one is this one so they're going to lie on each other how it was how it was yeah yeah it should be like this I forgot so it's going to lie like that so once again the intake one and the exhaust one they're going to be placed like that. We're going to install some bolts so to be sure that they are not going to go out of place. So let me install them. 
Окей, бекос от Олайн, от топ оф да кам шаф чер нот гонг бил от фит ренч дейр, сао I use the place where the cam shaft should be locked and I have used 21 mm wrench so to rotate it from there where the tool is installed Okay, so the bolt brackets are installed on the cam shafts So this is the intake one I have tightened up the bolt here and on here where they attach to each other So here is the exhaust one And the most important thing is the brackets to be flush on the cylinder head As we can see here Yeah, here it's going to be really hard to show you but uh, you need to believe me Let me show you here, probably going to be able to show you Okay, so as we can see the intake one is flush Actually this bracket is on two steps That's why on the front look That's why on the front looks that it's not flush but as we can see on the back It's flush where the bolt is, so it's kind of deceasing, but yeah, it's flush. So this is the idea now. I'm going to lift up the car. I'm going to rotate the engine. Yeah, first of all, I need to install once again the bolt for the tensioner, and then I'm going to rotate it and lock up the crankshaft. Okay, so the car is lifted, and I'm highly recommending you to remove this. Metal cover here, this cover, which is looking like, um, let me see where I put it, which is this one, it's called by three bolts. This is going to uncover you the flywheel. This in our case is automatic and this is going to uncover your flywheel and you're going to have much more view on the locking pin and what, what you are doing especially because on this engine it's really hard to walk up the crankshaft because you don't have a lot of view what you are doing so once again I'm going to use this pin to walk it and it's going to be impossible to show you where to do it because uh, it's going to be only by fuel <clears throat> now I'm going to place it and I'm going to show you where you're going to be able to see it through this plate here which we have removed Okay, so the pin is installed. I'm going to give my best to show you where it's going to pop up. But as we can see the end of it, where it gets out. So it's, how to tell you guys, underneath the starter motor. It's a tiny hole there and let me press it. Uh, before I rotate the engine, I have made my own marking on the flywheel, which is going to make the job a little bit easier. As you can see, let me show you. This yellow marking on the gearbox, I have made one, on one of the teeth on the firewheel also a yellow marking. This is going to iron my pin much more easier. So I'm going to rotate now a little bit uh, the engine until I align the bot, bot marks and then I'm going to lock up the crankshaft and after that I'm going to try to show you where it goes. Okay, so let's give it a try. Okay, I hope you guys see the mark. Okay, like that. And now I should be able to fit my uh, crankshaft locking pin in place. And yeah. So now let me figure out how to show you. Okay, so I'm going to try to do it using the end endoscope. So let's see, am I going to be able to show you? So as we can see here, this is the working pin and it is in inside the flywheel. So uh, yeah, it's going to be impossible to fit the camera there and show you. It's really tight fitment. Uh, and now actually the hole underneath, as we can see for the boat, for the hydro coach. Uh, BMW especially says that you need to pay attention to not fit the working pin in this hole where the boat goes for the hydro coach. So you need to pay attention when you fit the locking pin inside the hole of the flywheel you should not be able to rotate the crankshaft almost any degrees but if you fit it in the other hole where this bolt goes uh, here you're going to be able to rotate it a little bit so pay attention on which hole your locking pin is located because this can trick you a little bit 
And about the tensioner, threaded tensioner, not the original one which the engine has, uh, I have installed the one which the timing tool came with. You need to threaten it up yeah. once again. Yeah, you can see it here actually. Uh, yeah, here. This is the bolt which goes out of, of it. You need to tighten it finger tight. And the thing that I'm doing after tightening finger tight, I'm doing one full revolution with a wrench, let's say. Uh, because uh, BMW is claiming that you need to torque it to some really small amount of force. I believe it was 0.5 Nm, which is really hard to achieve. I'm doing this finger tightening the tensioner and after that I'm doing one full revolution with the wrench. This should be enough to, to put enough tension on this uh, chain. So now the crankshaft is locked, the camshafts are locked in position. The only thing that's left is to install the positioning plate for this reluctor wheels. Okay, so as we can see, the plate has two pins which should orient the reluctor wheels. So I'm just going to rotate them a little bit. Okay, like that. And the bolt bolts, which is going to securely position them. And after that, the only thing that's going to left is to tighten up the bolts for the camshafts. Yeah, I know this is not the full procedure because I haven't undone the bolt for the crankshaft. Uh, for this, probably someday I'm going to do more detailed video about this when I have the time. We have changed only the valve seal, so I didn't have to undo the crankshaft, so I have removed only the camshafts. I'm just going to tighten them up just a smidge. Like that. And now we can tighten up these bolts. So let me check the what was the torque spec, but I believe it was 20 Nm plus 2 times 90 degrees. Let me check them. Okay, for the crankshaft pin, it's going to be much more easier to show you on the service manual. So this is the crankshaft pin once again. This is where it's located on the flywheel. Uh, so yeah, it probably had some better photo, but yeah, it's only this. So Hopefully you guys see how tight place it is. It's really hard to show you there while the engine is installed, but uh, this is where it should be located. And I was talking about this hole. If you place the pin here, it's going to make you think that you have walked the crankshaft, but uh, as you can see the difference in the diameter of the holes. So this is a tool, as we can see, it states that uh, it should be placed without gap on the cylinder head. And my tool, for some reason, it has small gap here. Here is flat, but does matter, not big of a deal. So yeah, as I, once again, I'm just going to check the tightening torque of these two bolts. And this is the funny tool which BMW recommends to use when tightening this tensioner with bolt on it. So oh, the Nm is 0.6. So it's kind of hard to do it if you don't have this type of tool because you cannot fit any type of torque range there or and it's really hard to find torque range with so much small setting. Okay, so I was right. So 20 Nm plus 2 times 90 degrees just check that everything is fine yep, the pins are there everything should be ok so 20 newtons I'm just going to mark them I'm going to start from 200 degrees and I should go to the 290. Okay. The first 90 degrees, now let's do the other. Once again from 200 to 290. And 90 more. I'm trying to do it with one swing. It's much easier. Okay. It's 
Casser le tête. Ok. Ça va, à ton ici. As you can see, it, the boot marks go up, so this means they should be okay. Now, I'm going to remove everything, the plate for the reworker wheels, the working plates on the camshafts and the working pin for the crankshaft and I'm going to rotate the engine two times of course. And we're going to reinstall them and see is everything in place. Okay, I have removed all the working plates and the pin. Now I'm going to do the two revolutions. I'm just going to watch the mark on the flywheel. And from there I'm going to know when I need to stop. This is why it's so easy to... This is why it's preferable to make a marking like this. Uh, because it's much more easier to know when you have done the revolutions, the two revolutions. This one. And this is two revolutions. Now I'm going to install everything back together and see is everything as it should be. Okay, so on the top of the cylinder head, I have installed the plate for the reworker wheels, the both working plates for the camshafts, and let me try to show you once again on the side. Uh, if I tighten up the bolt, it's going to be fully flush with the cylinder head. Uh, yeah, it doesn't want to focus for some reason. Yeah, as we can see, and here on the exhaust one, as we can see, fully flush. So yeah, this engine is timed, and this is the procedure which I'm going to do. Yeah, now I'm going to install the tensioner, of course, the hydraulic tensioner, and this is going to be the end. Uh, but pretty much, this is what you're going to need to do to time up this engine. Yeah, you're going to need the special tools, of course. It's going to be kind of hard without it. Okay, and the engine is running. Kind of smooth. Actually, this car has some issues with random misfires. I believe it was from cylinder number three, but this is some different issue. It had it before. I just want to show that the engine is running fine, and the only fault code that he is getting is for a misfire on cylinder number three. But as as I told you, he had it previously. Uh, the owner was thinking that it's going to disappear when we fix the valve seals because we have changed it and the uh, engine was consuming somewhere around liter or liter and a half on every 1000 km so it's possible to have a lot of carbon build up on the pistons and on the valves so he go going to drive it he going to see is it going to disappear little by little uh, because it can be many other things it can be from the lpg it can be from compression it can be from spark uh, but yeah i'm hard to do only this job so I'm going to leave it like that, uh, the engine is running good, we don't have any issues, the valve throning is working, the vinyl system is working, pretty much this is it, this is how to time up your engine, yeah let me show you on the back, we don't have any smoke, as we can see yeah we have some condensation in the exhaust system but it's normal so not big of a deal. So. Okay guys, I'm going to end up the video here. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.